All right, guys, both my girls are watching the shows, so hopefully I will have enough time to get through these last two examples without being interrupted. For some reason, these recordings, I they don't let you pause. You can just stop it. So that's why I had to do this in a few different segments today. So the second example, it says find the area of one petal of r equals two sine three theta. Okay, so we need to figure out where to start and stop our integral. We know the formula um, is one half times the integral of our function squared, but we don't know where to start and stop this to get one petal. So something to keep in mind with roses are that each petal starts and stops when r equals zero. So one petal, you start at r equals zero, you go around and you're back to r equals zero. And for this particular graph, two sine three theta, um, one petal would be done like here. And then we have the next petal that gets actually graphed down here. So it's like we have these negative r values. Instead of it being up here, it's kind of reflected down with the negative r values. And the third petal is like this. And actually, the period then, we finish that third petal and we're just to pi. So the period equals pi when there's an odd number of petals. Which once again, the number of petals is determined by the number in front of theta. So if it's an odd number, that's how many petals you have in the period is pi. So there's a few ways you could do this. Um, one way, if you know the period is pi and you know how many petals there are, you could just divide the period by the number of petals. So we get pi over 3. And so that helps us figure out that this right here is pi over 3. So we're wanting to find the area between 0 and pi over 3. That would give us the area of one petal. But let's say you have no idea what the graph looks like or where the petals are or what the period is or how to figure that out. Another way to figure that out is by simply taking 2 sine 3 theta and setting that equal to 0 and finding the zeros because we know the petal, like I said, starts and stops at 0. So I'm going to divide by 2 and I just get sine 3 theta equals 0. So when you have a 3 next to the theta like that inside the sine, you cannot divide by 3 until the very end, until you look at your unit circle. So I set 3 theta equal to all the places where sine is equal to zero. So sine equals zero, like at zero, pi, two pi, you know, keeps going forever, three pi, four pi, et cetera, right, dot, dot, dot. So if we divide this, all of these by three, we get theta equals zero, pi over three, two pi over three, pi, et cetera. Okay, so every pi over three, we're going to have a radius that equals zero because we set our r, our function, equal to zero. So that makes sense from the picture I drew here. If we have a zero at zero, then we go, we're graphing, we're graphing, and when we get to pi over three, we're back to zero. Then we're graphing, we're graphing, we're graphing, when we get to the two pi over three radial line, even though it's down here, that just means the r value is negative, uh, we're back to zero. Then we're graphing, we're graphing, we're graphing, when we get to pi, we're back to zero. So another way to do this, to figure out where the petals start and stop, is just, if you don't know what the graph looks like, is just set the function equal to zero, and then just pick any two and integrate between those two for one petal. So I could have done from pi over three to two pi over three if I wanted to, or from two pi over three to pi, and I would get the same answer, but usually easier to use the one that has zero. Okay, so I've got a lot of mess here, so I'm gonna just kind of rewrite this down here with more space. So area equals uh, 1 half times the integral from 0 to pi over 3. I'm going to go ahead and square the 2 and square the sine. So I have 4 sine squared 3 theta. So all I did is I just took care of that squared outside of the parentheses by squaring the 4 and squaring the sine. You would not square the 3 theta. Okay, so now with this sine squared, I'm going to use the power reducing formula because I can't integrate sine squared. 
Okay, so sine squared theta, as we wrote in our notes earlier, is equal to, here it is, 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. So I'm going to replace the sine squared with 1 minus cosine 2. This is cosine 2 theta, but since this problem has 3 theta, I actually have to do 2 times 3 theta and over 2. So this is what I want to integrate. 2 and the 4 reduce. And one more thing, this 2 and this 1 half can also reduce. So I'm just left with the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 1 minus cosine 6 theta d theta. Okay, so fairly simple to integrate that. And we get theta. And the integral of negative cosine is negative sine, so minus sine 6 theta. Keep the 6 theta, but then we have to multiply by 1 sixth when we integrate. So I'm going to evaluate this now from 0 to pi over 3. So plugging in the pi over 3, I get pi over 3 minus 1 sixth times the sine of 6 pi over 3, essentially. Right? Because I'm doing 6 times theta. So that's plugging in pi over 3, minus, now I'm going to plug in the 0, scoot this paper over a little bit, so when I plug in the 0, I get 0 minus 1 sixth sine 0, and sine of 0 is 0, so this whole thing is just 0. Okay, so our final answer here will be pi over 3 minus 1 6 times the sine of, so 6 pi over 3 would be 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. So we really just get pi over 3 for our answer. Okay, so that is how you find the area of one petal. What's wrong, Rose? What's wrong, honey? You want to sit on my lap? Okay, so I'm going to let her color, so you've heard the child's back to Thank hang out. You. She's going to color while I do the last example. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so our last example for today, and we'll do some different types and more complicated ones when I get back Friday. Okay. Okay, Rose says okay. All right, so example three is sort of similar. It's R um, equals... Okay. You want to go sit in the booster? It's R equals, okay, go over and sit in your booster. 4 cosine 2 theta. And it's no, 1 pi. No, and mommy do it. Okay. Let mommy do it. Okay, I'm going to take you here. You get a piece of paper. There you go. Here's a piece of paper. Okay. <coughs> so this one is also a rose. So just a reminder, the four here, that tells you just how long the petals are. The two, that's what helps us determine how many petals. So if it's even, we actually have twice that many petals. So cosine two theta should have four petals. And when you have an even number of petals, the period is two pi. No, this is a lot to keep straight. So I said with an odd number of petals, the period is pi. With an even number of petals, the period is 2 pi. But even if you're not sure exactly what it looks like or of that, some of that information, to figure out where to start and stop your petal, once again, you can just set your R equation, which is 4 cosine 2 theta, equal to 0 to figure out where to start and stop each petal. So I divide by 4, and I have cosine 2 theta equals 0. So I have 2 theta equals... And then I just need to answer, where does cosine equal 0? And that's like at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. And then, you know, I could keep going round and around, adding pi here. So I could just keep going 5 pi over 2, Mommy. 7 pi over 2, etc. Do you need me to help? Um, I don't want No, either way. Yeah. Just trying to put a lid back on our marker. Okay, so divide everything by 2. And we end up with theta equals pi over 4 
3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, etc. Okay. So for one petal, we could go from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. Help! Okay, here you go, babe. So, actually what this looks like, if so these pi over 4s are kind of our radial lines where we're graphing our petals between, turns out this one, so it starts at 0 way over here because the cosine of 0 is 1. So we're starting, not in the origin, we're starting out here when the petals come in, okay? And then you got this one, okay? And then it grabs this one. And then it grabs this one. And then it comes back and finishes that up when we get to 2 pi. So, pretty cool. So, when we actually graph between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, we're actually finding this petal down here. But it's okay if you don't know that. It doesn't super matter because all four petals will have the same area. So, just pick two endpoints that are next to each other, and that's what we're going to put on our integral. So, area is 1 half times the integral from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 of 4 cosine 2 theta <laughs> squared 3 theta. Great job. You want to do a new one? Yes. Okay. Is it in the purple one? Okay. All right. So, um, once again, I'm going to kind of distribute that squared. Let me kind of put this over here. Okay. So, I have 1 half integral pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. So I have 16 cosine squared 2 theta, d theta. And then I'm going to use the power reducing to get rid of the squared. So I have 16 times the power reducing formula for cosine squared is 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. Plus 1. Okay, thank you. So the 2 and the 16 can reduce, so that would become an 8. And then this 8 and this 1 half out here can reduce and it becomes a 4. So I'm just going to integrate from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. 4 times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. So why don't I actually just go ahead and distribute that. So 4 plus 4 cosine 2 theta. 2 theta. Want to ask space here. I'm going to push that up and then I will do the rest on another piece of paper that I will find. Let's see. There we go. Where's the other marker? They're up here. Where's the other marker? Draw it on your paper, not on the table, okay? All right, so here's where we're going. Where's the marker? Just a second. So when I integrate that, I get 4 theta. The integral of cosine is sine, so plus 4 sine 2 theta, but then I need to divide by 2. So I've got 2 theta. And I'm going to evaluate that from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. Are you okay? okay and this, of course, reduces to 2. So, I am going to um, not plug in the 3 pi over 4. So, 2 times 3 pi over 4 would be 3 pi over 2. Okay, I'm going to take care of her. Now, plug in the pi over 4. I'm going to let you finish it. An alternate way you could solve this is you could integrate 0 to 2 pi and then divide by 4 because there's 4 pi. That actually will work and your numbers will probably be easier. Okay, so your homework today is just the next page. So I just want you to do numbers 1 through 4 for homework. Don't worry about page 5 and 6. So just do the next page. I apologize for the crazy kid stuff and the whining. Hopefully you found it entertaining and not super annoying. And I will be back tomorrow to answer your questions. So good luck finding area of polar curves.